and welcome to worship on this second Wednesday in the season of Lent. Again, we are using the seven wonders of the Word for our focus during this season. If you need copies, please uh, either call the church office at Bethlehem or Laura Lignell at Hope. With that, let us begin our worship, calling God into our presence in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us together use our opening dialogue. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Turn us again, O God, of our salvation, that the, that the light, light of your face may shine on us. May your justice shine like the sun. And may the poor be lifted up. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Lord God, you, you have, have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. First reading is from 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Here ends the first reading. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through three. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. Here ends the second reading. The Holy Gospel for this evening is from the Gospel according to St. Luke. After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up, left everything, and followed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, the risen Christ. Amen. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O sinner, come home. That wonderful old hymn has been one of my favorites since I was in the seventh grade, and I heard it sung by the chapel choir at our Savior's Lutheran in Cloquet. After my first encounter with the hymn, it didn't take very long for me to embrace that hymn for the tune and the wonderful message. 
As I worked on this theme, I recalled that wonderful old hymn again. You know, our Bible is packed with reports of God calling, most often to individuals, but always to God's people. You might remember some of the individuals. God called Noah to build a big boat. God called Abraham and Sarah to leave their home and go to a strange new place called Canaan. God called Joseph to save the nation and much of the world from starvation. God called Moses to lead the nation out of bondage in Egypt. We can look to Aaron, to Joshua, to Samuel, to Saul, to David, to Solomon, and to a whole host of prophets, and to Jonah, to Job, to Ruth and Naomi, and to Esther. That list doesn't begin to cover the Old Testament. The New Testament's a little easier. We can at least pronounce the individual names a bit better. Twelve disciples, Paul of Tarsus, Timothy, and Barnabas. However, the New Testament becomes a bit more challenging in that the call is no longer centered on one family and one nation of chosen people. With the arrival of the Word made flesh, the call expanded to include the whole world and everyone and everything in it. In the Old Testament, the calls were usually through prophets or judges. In the present age, God has spoken through the Son, the Christ, the Anointed One. Calls from our God usually happen with a challenge or a problem, or even a crisis attached. Ask anyone today who has answered the call to any sort of ministry about their call process. What you will learn is that the calls rarely happen when it is convenient to answer in the affirmative. Those calls also come with a cost. It may not even be monetary. Serving a call for our God almost always involves sacrifice for the person being called, the family of that person, and even the close friends, relatives, and neighbors. I think one of my favorite theologians sheds light on what is involved in a call. Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote in The Cost of Discipleship, when Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. Christ himself goes before us on this journey to the cross. Christ goes before us to the grave, and Christ is raised to new life as the first fruits of the resurrection that he promises to share with us. As Jesus walked this earth, we have reports of him calling a variety of characters. Most of them were simple folk who seemed to long for something other than than their hard, dreary lives. Matthew, Mark, and Luke in our Gospels put Jesus' call in his own words. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Jesus' call is for us not to save death and dying for the end of our lives. Life in Christ requires dying now. Those who hope in God as the Redeemer from death have to embrace the vulnerable, suffering love that leads to a cross. Our life as Christians involves a call to set aside and die to anything and everything that might get in the way of God's will. God's will for creation is that all of creation might live and do so in peace and in joy. We are human beings, and we are meant to be in a loving relationship with our God. But we are human beings, and as such, we resist that relationship all the time. We human beings would rather be God ourselves. 
So we don't want to be told what to do. It is that simple. The good news for us is that we have a Savior. Our Savior calls us as God's own living word. Our Savior even showed us the way back into the loving relationship God intends for us. He suffered, he died, and he was raised again for us, all of us. So why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and for me? Why should we linger and heed not his mercies, mercies for you and for me? Come home, come home. You who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling, O sinner, come home. During this season of Lent, God is once again calling. God is calling each of us, perhaps to ventures we cannot see, perhaps to paths we have yet to walk, perhaps even to perils we cannot know or predict. The good news is that God never leaves us alone in our struggles. We have a Savior who walks each step of the way ahead of us and guides us around all the pitfalls. Oh, for the wonderful love he has promised, promised for you and for me. Though we have sinned, he has mercy and pardon pardon for you and for me. Let us return to our God in this season, knowing that the call we hear is backed up with the promise of that wonderful love. Amen. Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our prayers tonight will end with the words, let us pray to the Lord. Please respond, Lord have mercy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the health of the creation, for abundant harvests that may all may share, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For public servants, the government, and those who protect us, for those who work to bring peace, justice, healing, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who travel, for those who are sick and suffering, and for those who are in captivity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For deliverance in the time of affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. giving thanks for all who have gone before us and are at rest, rejoicing in the communion of all the saints, we commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to you, through Christ our Lord. To you, O oh Lord. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus teaches us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace with those around us. Receive the blessing. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, free to serve your neighbor. God bless you, that you may be a blessing. In the name of the Holy and Life-Giving Trinity. Amen. Amen.
forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.